As promised, today we have a look at the transfers I've already secured for next season. Pretty much our incoming business is now complete, plus we've got the Europa League final. Hello and welcome to episode 12 of Gunning for Glory. I'm Kev and I know I said I'd show you the last two Premier League games. However, um, before we even played Newcastle, we at Man United were crowned as champions. They won their game. They played before us. They won. It didn't seem at any point to show you. I'm showing you the last Premier League game of the season, which is at home against bottom of the, T bottom of the league Swansea. Um, but I thought I'd just show you that one and then we'll do the Europa League final. But first, as promised transfers now before we get into the transfers let me show you my shortlist i said in the last episode where are we um that i'm i've tried to sign just about every wonder kid in fm17 and look at that for a shortlist i'm just gonna scroll through it fairly slowly you can pause it if you want to have a look at who's on there and um, the important thing is this column because if they don't have a price over there they're not really purchasable at least not for crazy fees and i don't want to be paying 80 odd million pounds for players either so they're the players that we've looked at and the transfers we've secured are these ones. Ignore Renato Sanchez. We did try and buy him. Um, I even accepted a negotiated price of like 65 million and then thought, what are you doing, Kev? We're trying to run it a net transfer profit. So we pulled out of Sanchez and signed Amadou Diaba instead. So these are players who are coming in. In goal, we're going to have uh, Mark andre Testegen coming in from Barcelona. Um, he is, oh, he's 25 now. He was 24 when we agreed the deal, I promise you. Um, but he's going to come in as our new goalkeeper. Um, he was the only one out of him, Obiak and uh, Donnarumma, who was actually recommended as quality signing by my scouts. And I couldn't tell the difference between the three of them. They were roughly the same price. There's still an outside chance we might go and sign Donnarumma as well, because his current ability is nowhere near Testagans, but has the potential to get better than him. So I'm tempted to sign Donnarumma as a backup keeper. That might be insane. He's going to cost like 35, 40 million pounds. But if we sell enough players this summer, that's an option. Um, our future left back is going to be Ryan Sessignon, comes in from Fulham. Um, he's only 17 at the moment, but has a full season in the championship. He won't be playing regularly for us next year, probably, but he's only cost £7.5 million. He's one for the future, and importantly, is English as well, who's going to help depending on how Brexit goes. Sanchez we didn't get. Um, we did get Justin Clivert, though. It was a bit of a bargain for only £5 million quid. Gives us a few more options in all these attacking positions. I know we've already got loads of players in those positions, plus Reese Nelson coming through, but... I'm still of a mind to try and sell Sanchez and Ozil this summer. Um, so that would then leave us with a, a, a midfield three of Lamar, Asensio and Lacazette, maybe. Um, with Nelson and Cliver offering a little bit of uh, backup and getting some game time. We've signed Kalechi Iheanacho. Now, I know I've got previous with signing him and it didn't work out last time, but this time... Um, he's got a full season in the Premier League under his belt where he's got 19 goals, 13 assists and a 7.27 average for Leicester. That looks like the kind of striker that we need. So he's going to be coming in as well. And then lastly, finally, a tough tackling midfielder at the club. Amadou Diara comes in from Napoli, a proper ball-winning midfield player whose primary position is defensive midfield who gives us the option to have one of those but is a natural in central midfield as well. I think that's some good summer transfer business. Now we need to sell an awful lot of players to try and get close to balancing the books. So as usual, let me know what you think of that transfer business. Also, let me know um, we haven't got any more money to bring players in now. We really shouldn't spend any more even after we sell. But let me know in our squad who you'd now be trying to move on in light of who we've already got and who we're bringing in. I kind of feel like I need to be selling five, six, seven players, particularly around the midfield areas because we've got an awful lot of midfielders now, plus Petacek and Mertesacker need to move on as well to free up some wage budget because... They're not going to play next season at all, really. Um, for this final game of the season against Swansea, we have rotated quite a lot. We play in the Europa League final against Lyon in three days' time. So I've basically gone to quick pick and hit full rotation. And this is what my assistant manager has picked for me. So I'm a bit confused why Ozil and Sanchez are in the team, but we don't really have many fit backups. So I guess that's why. And it doesn't hurt to get a little bit of game time into them. Neither of them will make it to the end of the game, presumably. So we've got a spinner in goal. Kulisinac, Mustafi, Koscielny and Chambers as our back four. Elneny and Coquelin in midfield. Theo Walcott up front with Sanchez Ozil and Asensio behind him. For a lot of these players, they're either playing for the opportunity to be part of next season's squad or more accurately, um, probably 
getting out there showing everybody that they still exist in the hope that someone comes in and buys them that certainly applies for the likes of Theo Walcott um Coquelin um Ospina these are all players that we're going to look to move on in the summer because they're just not going to get anywhere near our team next season Walcott has not been anywhere near the team this season and we're bringing in Cliver and Ian Acho as well so he's even further down the pecking order with the new signings that are coming in even if we sell Alexis and Ozil so he's responded by scoring a goal. It's only his second goal of the season. It's the first time we've played him up front. He might have been the answer to our striker problems all this time. Imagine if we'd have given Theo Walcott 10 games where Giroud was up front and we'd have ended up winning the league because we'd have we'd have turned around some of these nil nils or one nil victories. Oh, that, that will make me so sad if in an alternate universe, Theo Walcott's ended the season with 15 goals and Arsenal are champions. Oh, that'd just be dirty. I don't really want him to score any more goals today now, just in case that happens um i'm interested in your views as well on renato sanchez because like i say we had a deal agreed with him and it became a, a straight choice between him and diora is that his name um but sanchez was 30 million pounds more and isn't really a defensive midfield player he'd be another one of these attacking flair players that we've already got an abundance of i am i'm refusing to acknowledge that walcott's just scored a second goal because it worries me about what might have been He's actually there's a good shout to be playing him in the Europa League final. To be fair, if he carries on playing the way he is today, because we haven't scored it, we've just not got any fit goal scorers. So I think Walcott's at least forced himself onto the bench for the Europa League final, and might even be forcing himself into the squad for next season as a like a third choice striker, because I'm tempted to move on Welbeck, Giroud, and Lacazette and and keep Ian Acho as our main man with maybe Walcott and, I don't, know, I don't know, perhaps that's selling too many. Perhaps we need to keep one of them around. I don't know. If if no one's going to offer us big money for Alexis, I might play him up front next year because we're going to have so many options out wide. Oh, so, so many decisions to make. I like the fact that I never do my transfer business this early. I like the fact that we already know who's coming in and I'm pretty sure... That I'm well. I'm going to try and discipline myself, and even after we've sold all the players we're trying to sell, I'm going to try not to go and spend that money. Cockerland's just been sent off. That might be the last thing he ever does in an Arsenal shirt. Um, right, let's take off Sanchez to save him for next week. We'll bring on Pepe Lou, who's one of the players that Arsene Wenger bought in um, over the summer in his capacity as director of football. Um, so we'll get him on to give him a little bit of game time. I mean, he's someone who might. He's probably, more than anyone, he's probably going to be a little bit miffed that Diawara is coming in because he was kind of hoping to emerge as our defensive midfield option, I guess, especially if we're moving on Coquelin and Wilshire and um, El Nenny, probably. Xhaka doesn't ever get in our team. That's the one area I'm not sure if I'm done strengthening. I, see, there is the big temptation that if we were to sell Alexis and Ozil and Drew, for example, and bring in £100, £150 million pounds for those three players. It's so tempting to go and spend £60 million pounds of it on Renato Sanchez and have... Oh, Walcott's got a hat-trick. Theo Walcott has scored three really good goals. He's had an absolutely fantastic game. Oh, goodness me. Do I play... Do I start him in the Europa League final? That would be mad, surely. He's only ever played one game up front for me. And we are playing against bottom of the league Swansea, remember? It's not like he's gone and done this against Chelsea and that's how we're making the decision. He's played brilliantly against a team that's finished rock bottom of the Premier League. But still, he's got a hat-trick. I don't remember one of our players scoring a hat-trick before. It might have happened. I just don't remember it. Walcott, again, running at the Swansea defence. And they're just terrified of him. There you go. They made the tackle there. But he's just attacking with such pace and power. And it's 4-3 now. Uh, we're going we're gonna to lose this game, aren't we? Are we, are we heading for another 6-6? It's so long since we've had a 6-6. We've not had one on this save yet. Every save deserves a 6-6, surely. Oh, it's going to be ridiculous if we get a 6-6. Six, six. I always blame the 6-6s six, in the past on the formation that we use, the 4-3-1-2. If we manage to pull off a 6-6 six, six with a completely different system, then it's not the fault of the old system. It's just me. I don't know when to go defensive. But we're just going to keep attacking. We're going to try and score six. Certainly Pepelu, and it's saved by... Oh, they've got former Arsenal keeper Fabianski in goal. There you go. Um, Ozil... 
to Pepe Lou again and he's had two good opportunities to score and wasted them both. He's not doing himself any favours to try and move up the pecking order for next season. Asensio plays in Walcott. Walcott does brilliantly to find Ozil and can Ozil cross to Walcott? He can. Theo Walcott's fourth goal of the game. I've surely got to start him in the Europa League final. I have I mean, this is this is potentially changing everything. I, d I don't know what to do now. I was pretty much certain I was selling him. I said at the start of this match that this would be his last game. We were just advertising that he's still alive. And then he goes and scores four goals. I just don't know what to do. Right, let's take Ozil off. He's played far too much of this game already. Um, <laughs> Theo Walcott scored four goals, everybody. This is just crazy town. And he's hovering. He wants. He wants more. He's going to score all six by himself. Um, Ospina, who surely he's playing his last game for the club because he's conceded three against part of the table. Swansea, but Walcott's at it again. Oh my goodness me. Theo Walcott is playing like a man possessed. Is this is this still the same Theo Walcott? I mean, I've not given it, I have not given him a chance this season, really. He plays up front and just goes and he's confused and demotivated. Well, shut your face, Theo. You scored four goals. Perhaps someone, perhaps Swansea will offer me 15 million quid for you now because I want that goal scoring potential in their team. That's mad. Now I need to go and sit in the corner and think about whether to play him in the Europa League final. Can't believe I'm doing this, but I am starting Theo Walker up front in the Europa League final. The rest of the team, we've got checking goal, a back four of Monreal, Koscielny, Mustafi and Bellerin, Shaka and Elneny in midfield, and then Sanchez, Ozil and Lamar behind Theo Walcott. Remember, Danny Welbeck's injured. Olivia Giroud hasn't scored for goodness knows how long. Lacazette hasn't scored for goodness knows how long. They're both in terrible form. Walcott's just got four goals a couple of days ago. We're just going to have to see how it goes. We are the favourites for the game. In theory, we should be considerably better than Leon, But we are playing Theo Walcott up front. And then, that's always something you've got to take into account when deciding if we're any good or not. Ian Acho can't arrive soon enough. And I just hope he carries his Leicester form over into an Arsenal shirt. Because 19 goals in the season for Leicester, that's a really good return. And I'm hoping he can be our 30 goal a season man. I mean, that, that's just come from absolutely nowhere. Memphis Depay has just scored an absolute screamer. It's one of the best goals you'll ever see in Football Manager. One touch, two touch, bang. Could Czech have done a little bit better? It's not right up in the top corner, is it? It's hit with some serious pace, but we haven't even had a shot yet. And I'm already thinking, stupid Theo Walcott. Scoring all those goals against Swansea, making me play him for a big game like this. We've got Giroud and Lacazette sat on the bench in the Europa League final. Theo Walcott up front. And we're now 2 0 down. What would you have done now? I know you're all going to have me in the comments for playing Walcott, but he's not the reason we're 2 0 down. He's not the reason we've not had a shot yet. The chances should be being created for him by three of the best attacking midfield players in the world who are playing in behind him and aren't doing their bit either. Perhaps they've just looked at who's in front of them and thought, you know what? What is the point today? Or do do they need someone like Giroud to play off of? He holds the ball up more. Perhaps, perhaps I'm being harsh on Giroud. Even though he's not scoring, perhaps he links the play up a lot better. Whereas Walcott, oh my God. Goodness, it's not the same player we had against Swansea, is it? Do I just accept it was a stupid... I accept it was a stupid decision and we bring Giroud on for the second half. And World Cup might feel hard done by, but my plan all along has been to sell him. It's still to sell him. He had one good game against an already relegated team. And I ruined our opportunity to win the Europa League because of it. Oh, no... Reload. Uh, right. Uh, why haven't I got Asensio on the bench? Right, let's bring Ramsey. Uh, not Ramsey. Wilshere. He can come on. Because it isn't going to get much worse. Wilshere doesn't let us down, remember. We've talked about this before. Oh, what 
what have I done? We don't even look competitive in this game. Right, Alexis. Find Giroud, who finds Ozil. There you go, that's that link-up play we're talking about. Meza Ozil scores, but we've already taken him off, and Wilshere's coming on for him now. Uh, but there you go, that's the link-up play from Giroud. Um, okay, so it's a tackle, but still, Ozil's following in. And it's not all over yet, but we have just replaced the guy who scored the goal with Jack Wilshere. So... Uh, Lamar's not having a very good game at all. I think it's time for him to come off. Who have we got on the bench? Lacazette. Let's get Lacazette on. Out wide on the right. We've now got Sanchez, Lacazette and Giroud all on the pitch. We should be able to find a goal from somewhere, surely. Should we go attacking? Let's go attacking. See if that makes any difference at all. They're just knocking the ball around at the back. They're playing a flat back seven or something ridiculous. We, I mean... We've not got a chance to break through this, especially without Ozil there to pick the lock. But there's Alexis running at him. And, oh, that was the chance. Alexis Sanchez scores that like eight times out of ten. And it just floats over the bar. And Giroud was there, ready to be played in. Alexis again with another chance. And again, it's straight at the keeper. He's trying to win it all by himself. And there are other players around him who he could try and pass the ball to. We've got ten seconds. Monreal can't get the cross in. And why did I play Theo Walcott? Is a question we'll just never know the answer to. <sighs> Roll on next season, eh? Don't forget to let me know down in the comments who we should be selling. We've done all our incoming business. We now need to sell like £200 million of a player to start to creep back towards net transfer profit, which is the goal of the save. It's never going to happen. But we'll try. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you very much for watching.